guitarist Dennis Tafe, and I'm in my home studio, and I want to welcome you to the making of my 344th album, which is called Modern Rock Guitar, Volume 344, Revolution. Uh, for those who aren't familiar uh, with my music and my approach to music, uh, basically, I'm a guitarist uh, who uses regular guitar um, and guitar loops done on the fly. Um, and guitar loops done on the fly just means that um, I play something on the guitar and I have looping pedal boards that record part of that, of what I'm playing, and then repeats it. And then I layer things on top of it, musical ideas. On top of that, um, I also do uh, bass emulations on guitar, which is just uh, usually, you know, dropping the guitar sound an octave to make it sound more like a bass. But it's done on guitar. And additionally, um, some synthesizer sounds which are either done with swells, which is where I hit hit a note, and then uh, with the volume down so you don't hear the pick hitting the string, and then I turn up the volume, makes it sound like a synthesizer. And also I've got a Eventide pedal that makes it sound like a synthesizer, but it's not MIDI guitar. So in other words, I'm not triggering any sounds, I'm actually creating the sound. Um, besides that, all my tracks are recorded live in the studio, uh, performed by me, uh, with just two microphones in front of two amps, in this particular case, two Black Star amps. And then... Um, all of my tracks are also um, improvised on the spot. So instead of just improvising within a song, I improvise the song itself. Um, in other words, I come up with a musical idea and I work from there and try to, you know, by improvisation, leading it to one way or another. Um, uh, the reason I do that is basically um, it, I can discover you know uh, magical musical moments I wouldn't have thought of otherwise uh, however it's a little more difficult because it's easy if you take chances and you're playing you know to hit a wrong note and that kind of thing um, and there's no overdubs at all so really what you hear on the Recording is actually, you know, what you would have heard if you were in the, in the studio room as well. Okay, um, let's talk about the cover real quick. Um, and I really like this cover. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, and the, um, the artwork... Um, wasn't created by me originally. Uh, however, it was in the free for commercial use, and I really like the the you know animation of it. And um, it was originally called the Assassination of Julius Caesar, and I would say if you look at it, you know there are people in robes and things. So I thought I'd have a little fun with that, and, you know, if you look on the left, there's a guy, and originally he was holding a dagger, but I switched it out with a guitar. I also added my face to a lot of the figures. And then on the right, <laughs> the guy with the robe, I'm not sure what he was doing, but it looks like he's strumming a guitar, and I put my little face on it as well, just for fun. It's... Yeah, but I really like that cover. I think it's a lot of fun to do. Okay, so let's get to this album. Um, and 
I can say overall this album really um, came very easily recording wise um, you know volume 343 the album prior to this one was much more difficult to record uh, and this one just came very easily I'm not sure why maybe I was just inspired or you know it just came out very well um, and let's begin with the first track um, and the first track is called Empires Part 1 and it opens the album and by the way the album is uh, 55 minutes and 36 seconds long so this is a, a pretty short track and it's about 2 minutes and 59 seconds and it's basically uh, an intro track really and here what you're gonna hear is played on guitar um, but it's supposed to emulate kind of a keyboard like sound or synthesizer type sound okay let's take a listen to that <laughs> This is the main theme of the album here. Yeah. If I fast forward that a little bit, a minute forty nine seconds. There's that bass emulation I was talking about. You can hear it sounds like a bass below the synthesizers. And these are layers. Repeating looping layers. And now here's there's a, a guitar coming in as well. And that's a delayed guitar if you hear it. Playing a repeating pattern. There we go. Okay. So that basically... Um, is the opening track of the album and really sets up the main theme of the track. Okay, now the second track is called Legions. And really, uh, this particular track uh, is 5 minutes and 49 seconds long. And what I really like about it is uh, the use of space. You know, it's not filled, uh, you know, with everything I could throw at it, basically. Um, so it uses a lot of space. Um, and also uses a delayed guitar and kind of a uh, repeating pattern that's kind of hypnotic. You know, and it kind of reminds me of a clock in some way. But it's very hypnotic. Uh, but I, I really love that kind of sound. Um... And also um, uses some um, harmonics um, to get this kind of ambience. So let's take a listen to that. And right there, it kind of reminds me of a, what you'd hear at a train station. Kind of like a clock, you know, a big clock.
on to track three which is called Roads and this one is a, quite a long track it's actually 11 minutes and one seconds and we'll take a listen to it here and I really like this track uh, and here uh, I was able to use a a, a drum machine you playing a jazz drums and pretty good drum machine. It's actually a beat buddy. It actually it's a drum machine and a pedal if you like. Uh, but with fairly realistic drum sounds. Um, so I added that to it. And it's playing kind of a jazz drum beat. Alright, let's take a listen to that. Okay, so let's fast forward a bit. 
Six minute, 43 second mark, halfway point, basically. Now notice here, I've got those repeating patterns on the guitar. It's a delayed guitar. I guess there's one thing on this track um, is that the drum pattern that I had selected um, it has this hi-hat that is working almost as a metronome and um, after I recorded I listened back and the hi-hat was was very loud so you'd hear this tack, 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 throughout the whole track and you know, it was really annoying, quite frankly. Had I had to do it again, I would have uh, removed that hi-hat thing. But because it was just improvised and live, I just selected a drum pattern. You know, I didn't realize that it had that tack tack. It didn't sound like it when I was playing. Um, and this is the one few times um, that I've actually used EQ. My equalizer because uh, it was very bright and I took down the brightness you know uh, in the frequency where the hi-hat was you know so it wasn't quite as you know sticking out of the track and uh, what a difference it made you know and that's one of the reasons why I like that track very much and I like the atmosphere it creates you know, um, and, and on this particular track, you know, because of the album itself, I didn't want a standard drum beat, you know, a rock drum beat. Uh, I wanted something more, uh, kind of maybe hand drums or that kind of thing. But this jazz drum worked out very well. You know, it's actually, um, I believe, played with mallets originally. All right, so now let's move on to track four, which is called The Senate, right? Um, as you call it, you know, because of the Julius Caesar cover. So this one's called The Senate, and it's eight minutes and one second. And for this particular track, uh, this one is um, something I haven't done in quite a while. I used to do it quite a while. That's basically where I would uh, pick a chord from a scale. Okay, that was, you know, built into the scale. And I would improvise over that. You know, and... And what I mean by that is only using notes from that scale. Um, and so let's take a listen to that. Yeah, there's that repeating chord. You can hear it. And that repeating pattern is actually from... So 
rather than just relying on the root for the bass line, I'm actually using notes from the scale. All right, let's fast forward that to about six minute, 21 second mark. See, all these layers become a big wall of sound. Right. Okay. Let's move on to the next track, which is called Tribunal. And it's 2 minutes and 14 seconds long. So it's a pretty short track. But what I really like about it is that basically it's actually a bass part and um, an octave higher, you've got the guitar mirroring the bass part. You can hear it here. Yeah, so there's my bass emulation. Sounds like bass, but it's played on the guitar. And then lowered an octave and looped. So you can hear it quite clearly here. track because of the atmosphere it creates. It's a real ambient kind of sound. You know, but it still makes sense musically, to me anyway, to my ears. You know, where some ambient tracks are really out there. <laughs> you know, are just kind of almost noise. In a good way, you know, not just... But that musically they don't make much sense. This to me still makes a lot of sense musically. Okay, let's move on to the next track. And this track is called Temples. And it's 7 minutes and 12 seconds long. And uh, one thing I, I did with this track is basically um, starts with real basic arpeggios and, and arpeggio shapes repeating patterns. You know, um, they're the real basic arpeggios, you know, arpeggios, basically the notes of a chord, right, um, or in this case, a triad, and, but they're played, you know, as single notes. Okay, and, uh, someone who heard it, um, said, boy, those sounds like Rick Wakeman, you know. And, and I have to admit it, it does kind of sound like something Rick Wakeman would play on his keyboard, you know, back in the uh, 70s. <laughs> okay, well, let's take a listen to it anyway. Uh, 7 minutes and 14 seconds long. And I, I do like this track, um, but it, you'll hear those arpeggios right away. There you go. That's the lady guitar playing a repeating pattern, and they're simple arpeggios. For some reason, it reminds me of the, you know, 
the story of that headless horseman galloping on his horse through the forest. Why, I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure why it reminds me of that. So anyway, this is the basic theme of this track. And let's fast forward to the 4 minute 55 second mark. Keyboard emulation, right? Or it goes na 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 na. You can hear it here. Right there. Na, 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 na. Right there. Okay, so you really have two layers of different keyboard type sounds of guitar. Now, um, to get it to sound like that, right? Um, I had to change, I have a, 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 a MIDI clock on, on my pedal board and it, 720 beats per minute, um, I should turn it up to 154, right? And that gives you a faster um, sound, you know, at 120 it's kind of, at 154, it's da na 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 right there. The problem is it kind of throws off some of the other tracks uh, or other delay sounds. So it's a real hard to keep all that in time, you know, wise. Okay. Anyway, let's, uh, we'll, we'll go a little more on this one. 605, here you go. track seven and track seven is called midnight and I have to say it's probably one of the better tracks on this album at least one of my favorites to be sure um, because it uses a repeating patterns is what I call them and that's just a delayed guitar and you're repeating a pattern or multiple layers of different patterns and then when they fit together they create one big pattern and this is what you get here reminds me very much of a clock as well and it kind of builds that tension um, let's take a listen to it and very much um, I guess I should have mentioned that you know a lot of this music is designed uh, you know as film music in other words um, music I could imagine in a film or could be used in a film for certain scenes because of the mood and atmosphere that they create okay let's take a listen to this and there it is there's repeating pattern there and then below that the repeating pattern layer I do the bass emulation and loop it Playing a fifth, right? Root fifth. 
layers of different patterns all together in time. I'd love to tell you it was perfect time, but it's off, you know, be because I'm looping it, I'm using my foot to hit the pedal, so it might be off just a tiny bit. Um, however, the the looper that I use can quantize a bit, so it helps keep things in time. But it gives you this kind of sound right here. I absolutely love uh, because it reminds me very much of Tangerine Dream, the German synthesizer band that did a lot of soundtracks in the 80s and 90s. Those are harmonics there. Those are harmonics between the seventh fret and twelfth fret. minute mark. repeating patterns that worked well together um, so that track I really like it it came out very very well and now finally Empire part 2 and this is basically an extension of track 1 which gave me that little intro synthesizer intro which was the main theme of the album and so this track basically just expands on it. Um, basically more musical ideas uh, that I could throw at it here. Let's take a listen. So there's that main synthesizer theme. But now I'm adding guitar to it. Basically, let's go to the 4 minute 23 second mark. Uh, basically, I mean, I just threw all the ideas I could at it.
I say corridor passages, I just mean uh, where it's pretty much um, my playing notes of a chord, kind of on, kind of like an arpeggio, but you le let the strings and each individual note ring out, right? And so it gives you this kind of sound right here. for Revolution, um, and I really like this album, I think it's, uh, it just flows very well, and I very much like the moods and atmosphere it creates, and very much um, film music, really, I mean, I could hear every one of those tracks in, you know, in a scene's you know, in a movie, you know, for dramatic effect, and so on. So, yeah, I'm very pleased with this album, um, and I really got to try some different musical ideas, and different sounds as well, some of them, um, and got to use my drum machines, you know. I mean, I've used drums in the past, um, you know, but usually they were, you know, rock drums, real, real loud rock drums, so I tried to use something different, and, uh, you know, uh, thank goodness for, for MIDI clock, which keeps things in time, um, because that was kind of a, a difficult, uh, drum beat, you know, to keep in time, you know, as opposed to a rock beat, which is basically, you know, one and two and three and four and, you know, this was kind of like the accents were on different beats and so on. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's the album. Um, so, and, and it really, um, I like this album so much that, um, you know, usually uh, my albums lately have been all in digital format, um, and, but I was thinking of making just, you know, a few limited run CDs of this album. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do because I like the cover too, you know, uh, but I like the material as well. Very good. Um, so I'll see you next time. I'll be with volume 345, hopefully. Uh, but this was uh, the making of volume 344 revolution. All right. See you next time. Bye.